So I've had a lot of questions about the parameters that you set up whenever you use your um, custom projection in ArcMap. So I'm just going to go over this uh, quickly on what these parameters mean and so forth. So I'm just going to do a new empty map and at this point you, you should have already gone online and downloaded the county shape file from the US Census for the county of your choice. So, hmm. I'm just going to take this counties for Texas. We can see it. You want to make sure that this county already maybe has some kind of projection information. And you can do that by checking out the source. And you can see here that this is has already been projected. I decided that I wanted to do Travis County. So I can use my tools, just going to dock my tools here and use the select to select Travis County. Now I can take that of course and uh, do things like data export data. But before I do that I want to set up my projection information. So if I look at my uh, coordinate system here. You can see right now it's already in NAD 83 hours, but I'm thinking about using a new projection. So that's what we were doing here with creating our projection. So we decide that we want to use a new projected coordinate system. And then here we would decide to use transverse mercator. So and so you can see your false easting, false northing, central meridian, and latitude of origin and skill factor. Those are the different values that we have to that we have to enter in. So um, this false east and northing, you just want those numbers to be big enough to where the entire county is in the positive because you want to always be working with positive numbers. So this is kind of like the origin of the grid. So what we're going to do is just measure the width and the height of our county and make sure that we put numbers in here that are bigger than that. The central meridian and the latitude of origin, all this is pretty much going to be the, the longitude and latitude of the center of the county. So we're going to find that out by putting our mouse over the longitude and latitude. So let's go ahead and find out those numbers. So if you see here right now, my only issue is that I have my display units here in the corner in meters. And um, I should get that to longitude and latitude in order to be able to pull down those numbers. So if I go over to general, I have the ability to change my display units. So I'm going to switch that to uh, degrees, decimal degrees. Where is it? Des there it is, decimal degrees. So I'm going to switch that over to decimal degrees. And you see how this number here changed now. Now I can actually write down that number. So using my sticky notes, so then you guys can see what I write down, I'm going to go over here and I'm saying that this is about what I want my central meridian and my latitude origins and all that stuff to be located at. And I'm seeing 90, negative 97.8 and uh, 30.3. So negative 97.8 and 30.3. Then also I might want, I need to measure the width and the height of the county. So let's just check out the width. We got about 80,000 meters or 8, 80 kilometers. So 80 kilometers. And then we're going to do the height. So, and these numbers are just, you know, just to, they don't have to be super accurate. They're just a good idea of what you need to put in. Because so, you're going to overshoot it anyway. So then this is 72,000. 793 kilometers. I'm just going to say 73,000 kilometers. So, okay, so 73,000 kilometers. Uh, 73,000 meters. So, okay, now I'm ready to do my custom projection. So, if I go back to my properties, my uh, data frame properties by right clicking layers, different properties, go to coordinate system. Here, I can save my new projection, projected coordinate system, and 
whenever I do my new projected coordinate system, I had also the option of new geographic coordinate system. You don't want to make a new geographic coordinate system on this one. We're going to use NAT83 as our, as our geographic system. So now we're going to click on Transverse Mercator. So go down to Transverse Mercator. And then here in the false easting, so I was telling you that we don't have to be exactly with our 80,000 and our 73,000 meters because now I'm just going to put it in 100,000. Nice even number. And my false northing, I'm going to do the same. 100,000. Okay, and then my central meridian, I'm going to put in my longitude. So. <clears throat> negative 97 up oh. so negative 97.8 okay now it doesn't want to work negative 97.8 and then here for my latitude of origin I'm going to put 30.3 and then scale factor um, you remember scale factor from the handout uh, I would read over that there's a table on there that explains what values you should use and and but in this case we're just going to use a scale factor of one um, the, but the, the uh, handout explains very well what scale factor does and what it is and what numbers to use but in general like a little short definition of it it scales down the scale on the central meridian so then the error is more evenly propagated throughout the entire projection um, if you remember from lecture, the central meridian is the only place, what we're having right now in our transverse mercator, it's the only place where uh, the scale will actually be accurate. In the rest of the places there will be some distortion. So the scale factor is a way of limiting that distortion in other parts of the of the, the map. So last thing we need to do is select our coordinate system. Um, I want to work in NAD 83. So we're just going to go North American date of 1983. And then finish. Oh, we have to give it a name. I'm gonna call this custom traps. Okay, so now you can see that we're in custom Travis as our projection system. And now we are in custom Travis. So if I go here to properties, you see that we're in custom Travis. If now um, to get this Travis County shape file that has that projection I'm going to export the data so data export data and the fact that I'm displaying my projection now when I export that data it's going to change it's going to be exported as that projection so I'm exporting the selected features because I only want Travis County and you can see I already have Travis selected and that's why it's blue if you need to select it you can click on the selection tool select and then um, all I gotta do is choose where to put it so I'm going to put that in my H drive, in my Geo Craft folder, and in Lab 6 folder, and I'm just going to call it Travis. Okay, so save. And that's going to export out that and ask me if I want to add to the map. I'm going to say yes. And now if I look at it here in my properties under the source, it's actually showing up as an Albers. Hmm. It's weird. But everything seems like, yeah, it's not using the projection we just made. Well, that's okay. So what we're going to do now is actually reproject this using the reprojection wizard so this is one option you have also is to do projection wizards so if I go to data management tools projection and transformations I can do a uh, feature and do a project and this is going to trans change this projection to other projections so here I can choose Travis 1 and then on my output corner system I can, well I guess I need to do 
the new one again, so projected. And then we said 100,000. Uh, 100,000. Our central meridian, negative 97.8. Latitude of origin, 30.3. And of course, NAT 83. So, North American datum 1983. Finished. OK. And OK. So, that's going to be projected for us. OK, that's good. So, now we have this one. If I check out the properties under the source, we see transverse Mercator complex. That's good. And then we see all of our values that's good and now also if we look under our layer properties and our coordinate system we're also using this same values here so that kind of gives you the idea also that there's the two projections there's the source data projection and then there's the, what your viewing projection is the source data projection is the projection of the layer itself while the viewing data is going to the viewing projection is a projection of what you see and there's the thing on projection on the fly um, we'll talk more about projection on the fly in the class but um, now pretty much that you have this you want to just switch that over to print and print that out um, I've seen some maps where people take the double and maybe they insert in a new data frame and then they put in the original one and have it with a different projection so you can see the difference so like if I go here um, I'm just go ahead and zoom to layer here, zoom to layer here. Um, there's small differences in these two, but you can really see the difference whenever you start doing things like no projection. So some people were comparing uh, coordinate, you know, uh, unprojected versus projected, and the distortions you get. So I'm just going to put NAT83 on one of them, and you can see here distortions that are you getting between the two. And this is this is nice. But anyways, remember to do this, and then after turning it one page paper, also explaining the parameters you chose and why the parameters you chose, and look over the lab on the last three pages where they have all the explanation and projections and how and what the different parameters mean and which ones you should choose and which in which situations.